Welcome to ForeFlight 101, an introduction. This course is going to be an introduction in using ForeFlight Mobile, as well as a brief overview of the iPad. My name is Ryan McBride. I lead the product design team at ForeFlight. My team is responsible for making the features within ForeFlight easy to use and understand. Today's topics, we're going to talk a little bit about ForeFlight the company, where we came from, where the company's going. Then we're going to talk about an iPad, how to choose the right iPad for you. Then we're going to dive right into the application for Flight Mobile. We're going to walk through all the core features of the application. After that, we're going to talk a little bit about what's new in 2015. And then I'm going to give you some information about the best ways to learn more about ForeFlight. ForeFlight, the company, was founded in 2007 by Tyson Weiss and Jason Miller. Tyson and Jason realized the potential of the iPhone when it was released, particularly the potential for it to improve the lives of pilots. So since 2007, we've been building the most elegant, high-performing apps in aviation. And one of the greatest aspects about ForeFlight is the pilot support team that comes with your subscription. Everyone on our pilot support team is an instrument-rated pilot, most are CFIs, and all of them are 100% ForeFlight experts. And you can contact our pilot support team in a variety of ways, which I'll get to in a moment. We're proud to be the number one selling aviation app since 2010. So let's talk about the iPad. ForeFlight runs on both iPhone and iPad. However, most customers find the iPad the most ideal device for them to use. There are two models of the iPad, the iPad Air and the iPad Mini. The only difference between these two models is the screen size. The actual application, ForeFlight Mobile, runs exactly the same on both devices. So the screen size you choose is totally up to you. For folks with a little more room in the cockpit, the iPad Air is often a good size. For folks who fly smaller aircraft, such as myself, I fly the 172, I prefer the iPad Mini because I keep it on my knee. For each of the types of iPads, they each come in two different versions. The Wi-Fi only model, which allows you to connect to wireless internet networks, as well as the Wi-Fi plus cellular model. The cellular model is unique in that it has a cellular data connection inside of it. So you can sign up with, for example, Verizon or AT&T and receive a data connection even when you're not nearby a Wi-Fi network. One of the main benefits of the cellular iPad versus the Wi-Fi only model iPad though is that it has an internal GPS. So if you don't want to have to go out and get a third-party GPS to plug into your iPad, you can get the cellular model and that's going to have that GPS built in already for you. It's worth noting that you don't have to sign up for a cellular data plan in order to use the internal GPS on the iPad. Now each iPad comes in a variety of different storage sizes, and we recommend a minimum of the 32 gigabyte size because you'll be able to download all of the ForeFlight information across the country, and it'll all fit on the 32 gigabyte size. If you have any more questions about how to choose an iPad or want some more tips or tricks on figuring out whatever the best iPad is for you, send us an email, team at foreflight.com. Our fanatical pilot support team is standing by to answer any questions you have. So let's dive right into the application, ForeFlight Mobile. ForeFlight Mobile is an electronic flight bag, and it does a wide variety of different things for pilots. It displays airport information, lets you view maps and charts, lets you view plates, taxi diagrams, IFR procedures. You can actually import your own documents into ForeFlight, like your POH or your checklist information, as well as browse a variety of documents that ForeFlight offers, such as the user guide for ForeFlight Mobile, the pilot's guide as well as a variety of other FAA and Nav Canada documents. We also have a wide library of weather imagery. We provide the ability to file flight plans, VFR and IFR, as well as receive weather briefings. We have a feature called Scratchpad, which allows you to take notes right on your iPad screen, and a whole lot more. But in order to start using these features, we first need to download the application. And we do that by opening up the App Store. The App Store is an app that's built into your iPad when you first receive it, and it's in the center of the screen on your iPad when you first open it. It's this blue icon here. When you tap on App Store, the App Store app opens up. And there's lots of different types of apps in the App Store, but the one we're interested in getting is ForeFlight. So in order to do that, we go to the top right of the screen, and we type ForeFlight in the search box. The App Store recommends a couple suggestions. You can tap on the first suggestion, ForeFlight, in order to open up the ForeFlight App Store page. 
In order to get ForeFlight onto your actual iPad, you'll want to tap the Cloud button. This is the Download button, and when you tap on it, you get a progress indicator. As soon as that progress completes, you'll find ForeFlight on your iPad screen, and in this case, the app is here in the bottom right-hand corner. So let's talk about getting around the application. When you first open up ForeFlight, you'll see something that looks like this. Along the bottom of the screen are a row of buttons. We call this the tab bar. In each of these buttons, we call a tab. The first tab is airports. So if we tap on that, we'll see a view that looks like this. Now, there's a couple different components of the airports view that I want to talk about. The first is the top section here. In order to pull up an airport, you can type in the search box and type in an airport's name, city, or just its, its actual waypoint identifier. And once you've done that and hit enter on your keyboard, that airport is displayed in the airport view. Now the airport view is divided into two sections. The top section here, the summary section, gives at a glance information about an airport. And the bottom section, the detail section, which is divided into a series of tabs and lets you delve deeper into information about any airport. Let's talk about the summary section first. In the top left-hand corner, we have some basic information about the airport we're looking at. The airport identifier, its name, city, state, and country, latitude, longitude, sunrise and sunset times, as well as a thumbnail diagram just for visual reference. Directly beneath that is some more useful information. Based on the current weather report from that airport, we're going to give you the flight category. At this airport, it's currently VFR. We also have the field elevation, the pattern altitude, fuel that's available at the airport, as well as a variety of available procedures. To the right of that is a summary of all of the frequencies for this airport. Now beneath the summary section is the details section, which I mentioned is divided into a row of tabs. Along the top of the screen are all of the tabs, and you can select whichever one you're interested in viewing. Right now we're looking at the frequencies tab. Under the frequencies tab there are two columns. The left column is the category, and the right column is the detail. So we're looking at the approach category of frequencies, and we can see that there's one relevant approach frequency for this airport, Milwaukee Approach on 127.0. I can easily tap on any of the other categories in the left-hand column in order to find frequencies that belong to those categories. Let's move to the next tab along the top of the screen, the Weather tab. Again, you'll notice a two-column layout. The left column shows a variety of different types of weather products that are available for this airport. The right column shows detail information. So right now we're looking at a METAR, and we can see that based on this current METAR report, ForeFlight has recognized that it's VFR conditions. We have a green VFR bubble, and our METAR is highlighted in green. Below the raw METAR is a translated version. So we have all of the standard codified METAR information broken down into each of the components for you. So if there's ever a code in the METAR that you're not familiar with, this is a great way to become familiar with it. Beneath the translated METAR information is weather at nearby airports, so you can quickly see what the surface conditions are in one general area. If I move down one category in the weather section, I get the nearest TAF. Now not every airport has a terminal forecast. Those that do, the terminal forecast will be here. For those that don't, we're going to show you the nearest terminal forecast. So the nearest terminal forecast to this airport is displayed here. And just like the METAR, we have our raw text up top, as well as our translated text below. Each of the time blocks in the terminal forecast is color-coded based on whatever flight condition is forecast. So right now, it looks like we're VFR out into the future for this airport. And we can see the translated versions of each of those time blocks beneath the terminal forecast. Underneath the TAF is something we call MOS. MOS stands for Model Output Statistics. MOS is similar to TAF in that it is a forecast. However, it extends further into the future than the TAF, and the MOS forecast is much more granular. It's available at many more airports that don't have a TAF. So we often recommend customers check the MOS forecast if there's no TAF available for their airport. And we've gotten a lot of good feedback that in many cases, the MOS forecast is even, often more accurate than the TAF. Winds aloft information. Winds aloft is available at every airport, and you can see the temperature, wind direction, and wind speed all the way up to the flight levels above the airport. 
Let's move one more tab to the right. That's the Runways tab. Right now we're looking at Runway 5 and 23, and we can see a couple pieces of information here. Everything you'd expect to find in your airport facility directory is listed, but ForeFlight's smart, and it knows what the current METAR is. It knows the direction of the wind, it knows the wind speed, and so based on the runway you've selected, it's going to give you your headwind, tailwind, and crosswind components for each runway. So we can see runway 5 is favorable currently because we have a 7 knot crosswind component and 5 knot headwind component. Procedures. All the procedures that are available for an airport are categorized. Right now we're looking at the airport category. This is going to be anything related to procedures on the ground. So the airport diagram, any hotspots. We can see we have two different types of airport diagrams. The first is the, air, the regular airport diagram, and I can tap on that. And when I do, I'm presented with the airport diagram in full screen. For users who are subscribed to ForeFlight Pro, all the diagrams are geo-referenced, which means you'll be able to see your current GPS position on top of that plate. It's very useful for situational awareness. If we go back to the airports view, and again under the procedures tab, we see another type of diagram, ForeFlight diagram. The FAA doesn't publish taxi diagrams for every airport in the United States, and so we've started filling in the gaps by generating our own charts. The ForeFlight diagrams are available at many airports across the country that regular taxi diagrams are not yet available for. And you can see they're much more detailed, and they're also geo-referenced. If I move down to the last category under the Procedures tab, I get to the Approach section. These are all the approaches that are available at this airport. In order to view one, I just tap on it, just like I did the taxi diagram, and I get that approach in full screen. And of course, the approaches are also geo-referenced, so as you shoot any particular approach, you're going to see your current position along that approach right on the plate. Notums. Notums are categorized by type, and we organize them by date. So right now we're looking at airport notums, and you can see that there were a couple relevant notums for this airport today, as well as in the last 30 days. Services. If you're flying into a new airport and you want to see what type of restaurants or car rental or hotel information is available, just tap on the services tab and you'll be able to pull up all the relevant information for nearby services. I mentioned earlier that ForeFlight runs on both iPad and iPhone. If you're running ForeFlight on your iPhone and you come to this screen and tap on any one of these services, it's actually going to call that service automatically for you. We do include the raw airport facility directory for those who prefer to look at it, and we take you right to the, the relevant page in that AFD. Now there's a lot more in the airports view, but the last thing I want to talk about in this video today is something we call our FBO view. In the top right hand corner of the airports view, you see four buttons. The bottom right of these buttons says FBOs. When I tap on FBOs, I'm presented an FBO list as well as other services that are available, such as flight schools, rental services, and maintenance. I can tap on any one of these. In this case, I'll select the first one, Bassler Flight Service at Oshkosh. And when I do, I'm provided a lot of information about this FBO, where they're located, when they're open, fuel prices, frequencies and phone numbers to contact them on, their website, their email address, amenities that are available. Any piece of information that you might want to find out about an FBO is available here. The next feature in ForeFlight Mobile is Maps. Along the bottom of the screen, I'll tap on the tab 1 to the right of the airport tab we were just viewing. That brings us to the map view, which looks something like this. All the maps on ForeFlight are projected onto a 3D representation of the globe, and all subscribers will see their current GPS position right on top of that map. The map is fully interactive, so I can take my finger and I can pan along, rotate that globe, and see any portion of the planet I'm interested in looking at. You can also take two fingers and spread them out on the screen. We call this pinch to zoom. This zooms in to your current location. Along the top of the screen, we can see a couple things. The first thing is the top left, our map selector. When we tap on that, we get a drop down. This drop down is divided into two columns. The left column is our map selector column. This is how we choose our different types of base maps in ForeFlight. For example, VFR sectionals, IFR charts, WAC charts, helicopter charts. The right-hand column is map layers. Layers are pieces of information we can plot on top of our base chart 
in order to get better situational awareness. When I select VFR sectional in my dropdown, my world map is replaced by VFR sectional. And again, you can see your GPS position right on top of that chart. Just like the, blue, the base map, this VFR sectional is fully interactive, so I can pinch to zoom all the way into one particular area. I can also take two fingers and move them together along the screen to zoom back out. We stitch all of our VFR sectionals into one continuous sectional of the entire country. In order to change the map, I just go back into my layer selector, which is the top left-hand corner, open up the drop-down, and select the type of chart I want to look at. In this case, let's look at an IFR low chart. So I'll select IFR low, it turns blue to indicate it's an active chart, and when I look at my map view, I have that chart on my screen. Again, fully interactive, pinch to zoom all the way into any particular area. But there's a lot of other different types of maps in ForeFlight Mobile besides just aviation charts. One of them is the street map. This is useful for locating streets. Another, the satellite aerial map. The satellite aerial map is essentially a stitched together map from satellite photography, and it's fully interactive just like all the other maps. So you can zoom in, and a lot of customers are actually impressed to see the resolution of this aerial map. You can continue to zoom in to see individual airplanes on any particular runway. So again, two columns, the left column for maps, and the right column for, for layers. Let's talk about layers. One of the most commonly used layers in ForeFlight Mobile is the radar layer, which is at the top of the list. So I'll tap that on, and ForeFlight plots the radar on top of whatever base map I had selected. In this case, I'm looking at NextRad radar on top of a VFR sectional. It's fully interactive, as always, so I can zoom into any particular cell and get information about it. Beyond just the intensity of this cell, we see a couple other pieces of information. The first is lightning strikes, which are plotted right on the map. The second is echo tops, the numbers. So we can see this particular cell towards the bottom center of our screen. The echo tops there were at 44,100 feet. We also see storm tracks. These are the horizontal lines moving across the screen. The leftmost circle in the storm track represents where the cell is currently. One circle to the right of that is where it will be in 20 minutes, the next one 40, and the next one one hour from now. Along the bottom left-hand corner of the screen are a series of stacked vertical buttons. The top button is the play button, and when you tap the play button, any animatable layers you've currently selected will start animating, just like this. We also have satellite in ForeFlight Mobile. Our satellite product is a combination of both visible and infrared satellite. I'll select satellite in my dropdown, and we can see that satellite fill in on top of the map. Another useful layer to look at is airmets and sigmets. Instead of deciphering long sentences that the FAA issues in their airmet sigmet product, we're actually going to just plot those airmets and sigmets out on the map for you where they were issued. We can tap on any airmet or sigmet to get information about it, including its type, when it's active, its altitude, as well as the raw text it was actually issued with. TFRs are another interesting layer to look at. When we select the TFRs option in the map layer selector, and zoom into any area that has a TFR, we can select that TFR on the map to get information about it. ForeFlight includes stadium TFRs, so even though the FAA doesn't publish every TFR they issue for major sports games, we're going to cross-reference local sports schedules for you and plot those TFRs on the map when the sports goes live. Flight category. This is a commonly used layer. Based on current MEDA reports all over the country, we're going to color code the bubbles on top of those stations that reported the MEDAR based on the type of surface condition that's currently prevailing. So for instance, in this screen right now, we can see a lot of green, that's VFR conditions, blue, which is marginal, red, IFR, and occasionally you'll see a magenta circle, and that's low IFR conditions. We can tap on any one of those bubbles to get information about it. This should look familiar. All of our MEDARs are plotted the same way in ForeFlight. So just like we saw in the airports tab, we have the raw MEDAR, color-coded, and then of course the translated beneath it. Winds aloft. Our winds aloft engine is global, but when I select winds aloft on the map, we get winds aloft information all over the planet, and it's fully interactive. So I can pan around the planet, zoom into any particular area I'm interested in looking at winds aloft information for, and along the bottom hand, right-hand corner of the screen is a, a drop-down. I can move this slider to select the altitude, 
that I want to see winds aloft information for. Tapping on any wind barb gives you information about the winds and temperature at that point. Pilot reports. When a pilot report is issued, we're going to plot that pilot report directly on the map where it was reported. There's different colors and iconography based on pilot report type. In this case, we can see in the Chicago area, a 737 reported moderate chop at flight level 220 to 230, and that was 52 minutes ago. One last thing I want to talk about on the maps view is planning routes. In ForeFlight, we plan routes in the nav log, and the nav log is accessible by tapping the button in the top of the screen that looks like a nav log. When I open that up, the button turns blue to indicate the nav log is now active. In the center of the screen, it says tap here to create a route. When I do that, I'm presented with an on-screen keyboard. I can then type in the waypoint identifiers for my route. So for instance, let's say we're flying from Oshkosh, so I'll type the Oshkosh waypoint identifier, and then I'll type a space. When I type the space on the keyboard, that identifier fills in. We call this a route bubble. The route bubble tells you that ForeFlight has recognized this route waypoint and is going to plot it on the map for you. You can see on the map, near my GPS position, I have that point plotted. Now I'll keep typing. Let's say we're going to fly a flight down to Schaumburg. I'll type 06 Charlie, which is the waypoint identifier for the Schaumburg airport, and again, space. ForeFlight automatically plots out that leg for us. Let's keep going. Let's say I want to head east to Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I'll type in the Grand Rapids waypoint identifier, and I get the route bubble. And you can see our second leg is plotted for us. Now let's say I didn't want to fly over the lake. I wanted to fly south of the lake and then up the coast. Well, in ForeFlight, there's two different ways to plan. The first, the way I just showed you, is by keyboard entry. But the second way is something we call touch planning. In order to use touch planning, simply tap on whatever point on the map you want to add to your route. In this case, I want to add a leg between Schaumburg and Grand Rapids. So I'll tap on that leg, and I present it with a target. And I can move that target to any waypoint. Way and when I lift my finger up, I'm given a list of options in that area. In this case, I selected Valparaiso because that was near where I lifted my finger up. And you can see that Valparaiso has now been added to my nav log. When I go back to the top, Victor Papazulu is now in between Schaumburg and Grand Rapids. Now let's say that I wanted to reorder my route. Let's say I wanted to actually go from Schaumburg to Grand Rapids across the lake and then head down south to Valparaiso. Well, you can easily reorder all the waypoints in your nav log by tapping on them and dragging them to the right position. So let's tap on Grand Rapids, and you can see it turns a darker blue. I'll then drag it with my finger to the left and place it between Schaumburg and Valparaiso. And when I lift up my finger, you can see the map has been redrawn in the correct order. There's a few other things in the navlog I want to talk about. Along the left-hand column, we have a series of four buttons. These buttons are how you provide ForeFlight with more performance information about your flight. The information you enter via these buttons is how ForeFlight does its calculations in your nav log for ETA, ETE, fuel burn. The first button is our aircraft button. This is where you fill in information about the aircraft you're going to be flying. Basic information such as the tail number, model code, equipment on board, as well as more advanced information, climate descent performance, cruise performance. All of this information factors into the nav log when you're ready to view it. Beneath that, our true airspeed the true airspeed we're going to be flying for this route. You can always change the units as well. Fuel burn, our hourly fuel burn, and again, units are customizable. The last button is something we call the altitude advisor, and this is a bit unique. Based on the route we've entered, as well as our aircraft performance, our fuel burn, ForeFlight is going to cross-reference the winds aloft information and give us a visual representation of what the best altitude to fly at for our route is. You can see at 9,000 feet, we have a two knot tailwind. Our total time in route is going to be two hours, 46 minutes, and we're going to burn 34 gallons of fuel. Once you're happy with an altitude, you can close the altitude advisor, and you can move one button to the right in the nav log, which is basically just the nav log summary view. This shows you per leg information for the route. So that's maps. Let's move on to plates. Along the bottom of the screen, we'll move one tab to the right, and we'll tap on plates. The plates view looks something like this. Plates in ForeFlight are divided into virtual binders. 
In order to create a binder, tap the drop-down along the top center of the screen. You're presented with a binder drop-down. In order to add a new binder to the system, tap the plus button, and ForeFlight asks you what you'd like to call this binder. In this case, we'll call it Oshkosh. And then I'll tap Save. When I do that, ForeFlight opens up the Oshkosh binder we just created. Of course, it's a new binder, so there's no plates inside of it. So let's add a plate. In order to add a plate to a binder, we tap the big Add Plate button in the binder. When I do that, I'll get a drop-down that looks like this. Based on recent actions we've taken in the application, for example, airports we've recently viewed or previous flight plans we made, ForeFlight's going to recommend some airports we're likely to want to look at a plate from. Or, if no airport is listed, you can tap the search box and enter the waypoint identifier for the airport you're interested in pulling plates from. In this case, I am interested in looking up Oshkosh, so I'll tap the Oshkosh button, and I get all the procedures for that airport. I can select one of these procedures, and it's automatically added to my binder. In order to view the procedure in full screen, just tap on it. I want to point out a couple things about this procedure we're looking at now. The first is, you can see your GPS position on top of it. You'll notice the blue box around a portion of the plate. This is the geo-referenced portion. ForeFlight Pro subscribers will see the geo-referenced portion and be able to see their airplane on top of that plate. ForeFlight Basic subscribers will still be able to see the plate, they just won't see their GPS position on top of it. Also notice the big red button at the top of the plate. It says tap to view two NOTAMs. ForeFlight has a unique and useful feature called NOTAMs on plates. Whenever a NOTAM is issued, we're going to list that NOTAM on top of the procedure that it is relevant to. So I can tap on that red button and I get all of the NOTAMs that have been issued that are relevant to this particular procedure I'm viewing. Also along the top is something we call annotations. That's the pencil button in the top left. When I tap the pencil button, I can then draw or type on any procedure. It's a great way to highlight portions of a procedure, draw maybe your taxi route along a taxi diagram, um, make notes. The next feature is documents. Documents is one more tab to the right along the bottom next to plates. When you open up the documents view, it looks something like this. It should look familiar, just like the plates view. In order to add a document, we'll tap the big add document button. This presents us with a view we call the document catalog. Again, it's a very familiar left column, right column organization. The left column is different categories of documents. You can look at documents published by the FAA, documents published by Nav Canada, documents published by ForeFlight, such as the user's guide, as well as import your own documents, maybe your POH or your checklist. In this case, I'll select ForeFlight, and there's one document in particular I want to call your attention to, the Pilot's Guide to ForeFlight Mobile. When you sign up for ForeFlight, you're going to have the manual for you right in your application. And you can download it by tapping that blue button. It'll download automatically to your iPad, and you'll always have the manual with you. There's one more document, though, in this list that I want to draw your attention to, and that's the first one under the ForeFlight category, the EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2015 NOTAM. If you flew into Oshkosh this year, no doubt you referenced this NOTAM. And if you were a ForeFlight customer, you would have had that NOTAM with you on your iPad. In order to add a document to, to your current document binder, just tap the blue button next to it, and it downloads automatically into the binder. To view a document, just tap on it, and it displays in full screen, just like our plates. Documents are searchable by text, they're bookmarkable, uh, and they're extremely easy to navigate inside the application. Weather imagery. The imagery tab is one more to the right along the bottom next to documents. We have a full weather imagery catalog built into ForeFlight. The left column is all the different types of weather imagery. We've organized the imagery in a funnel. So the top options in this list are going to be uh, large, wide-scale imagery products, prognostic charts showing fronts, things like that. As you move down the list, you're going to get much more granular in terms of the coverage. So for example, airmets, sigmets, icing, all the way down to pilot reports. Filing and briefing. You can actually file VFR and IFR flight plans in ForeFlight as well as receive weather briefings without ever even talking to someone. You can do it all right through your iPad. When you open up ForeFlight File and Brief, which is the tab uh, third from the left along the bottom, you're presented with a screen that looks like this. The left column is all the previous flight plans you filed. The blue option is the flight plan you're currently looking at. The right column 
is the details for that flight plan that you're looking at. To add a new flight plan, we can tap the New Flight Plan button in the top right-hand corner of the screen. When I do that, I'm presented with a blank form that I can fill out. Once I've filled out all the information in my flight plan form, at the bottom of the screen are two options, File and Brief. You can always receive a weather briefing for a flight prior to filing it. That's going to pull down your standard Lockheed Martin Flight Service weather briefing that you can browse on your iPad. When you file, the flight plan is sent off to Lockheed Martin. If it's a VFR flight plan, it goes to Flight Service. If it's an IFR flight plan, it goes to the Air Traffic Control System. Notice this arrow in the center of the screen. We call this arrow our Send To button. Lots of pieces of information in ForeFlight can be sent to other views. I'll give you an example. When we tap the Send To button, one of our options is Map. The flight we just entered in our flight plan form on the File and Brief tab can be automatically visualized on top of our map by tapping the Map button. This sends that route we planned to our map view. It works in reverse, too. So I can select the Send To button on the map view, plan a route out on my map, and then send it to File and Brief. It will copy the route that I've made on my map and automatically enter it in the relevant field in the flight plan form so you're ready to file. Scratch pad. One of the goals of ForeFlight is to completely replace pen and paper. And as we all know, taking notes is an important part of flying. Scratchpad aims to reduce the amount of paper you have in your cockpit by allowing you to take these notes right on top of your iPad screen. Scratchpad is the second to last tab along the bottom of the ForeFlight mobile application. When I tap on Scratchpad, I'm presented with a view that looks like this. Again, it should look familiar. It's identical to the Documents view and the Plates view. To add a new Scratchpad, just tap the New Scratchpad button. When I do that, I'm provided a series of options. Scratchpads have templates, basically a pre-formatted way to take a note. The most basic template is what we call Draw, and if you select Draw, you'll be able to make notes with your iPad stylus or even just your finger on the screen. One of my favorites, though, is actually the ATIS template. If you select the ATIS template from the template dropdown, we're going to give you a, basically an ATIS form that you can then fill in very quickly to copy down the ATIS. There's a lot of other different types of templates in there that are meant to make your life as a pilot easier. It's worth noting that you can use ForeFlight on two iPads and one iPhone at the same time, and a lot of the things you do, for example, flight planning, taking notes on Scratchpad, all this information stays in sync across your devices, as long as they all have an internet connection. Downloads. So we've talked a lot about how to get different pieces of information in ForeFlight and how to view them. However, it's important to make sure you have all the vital information for your flight already downloaded to your iPad before you go flying, because you likely won't have an internet connection in flight. The Downloads view enables pilots to download all the information they're going to need so they can rest assured they have it when they're in flight. Let's take a look at how that works. The last tab in ForeFlight is called More, and there's a lot of things in the More tab, but the one we're going to talk about today is Downloads, which is the first option. So select the Downloads button, and in the right-hand column, you'll see a series of countries or regions. Select the region you're interested in downloading information for. When you do that, you'll see a screen that looks like this. The right-hand portion of the screen is divided into two sections, the top section and the bottom section. Let's look at the top section first. We can see a lot of different types of information, VFR charts, IFR charts, terrain, WAC, AFD. The top section is where we turn on the types of information we want to download. Directly beneath it, are the subregions that we want to download it for. So if we go back and go over this one more time, we selected the country first, then we selected the types of data we want, and then we selected the regions we want it for. At the top of the screen in this view is a back button that says back to downloads. When I tap this and go to the bottom of the previous screen, I have a big green download button. When I tap this button, ForeFlight is going to look at the country I selected, the types of data I selected, and the regions I selected, and it's going to download all that information directly to my iPad. When the download is complete, the green button turns gray. There is a lot more in ForeFlight Mobile. Synthetic Vision is a popular feature we recently announced. It's a 3D view of what's outside the window, with accurately rendered terrain, obstacles, runways. Plates on Maps is another favorite. 
Plates on Maps allows you to take any plate, as long as you have a geo-referenced plate, which is, again, included with the Pro subscription, and place it directly on top of the map. You can then, for instance, add different types of map layers. In this case, we're looking at a VFR chart, and on top of that we've put our approach plate, and on top of that we've put our GPS position, and on top of that we've put an animated radar layer. And this is totally customizable by the user to see whatever types of information you want to see. It's extremely useful. Weight and balance is now built into ForeFlight. You can enter your tail number. We'll pull down as much information about your aircraft as we have. For the information we don't have, we'll ask you for some information from your POH. Once you've entered that information, we draw out the CG envelope for your aircraft. And modifying your aircraft or dragging items between stations is as easy as tapping. ForeFlight Web is something we're announcing this year, and that's the ability to plan your flights on your home computer. ForeFlight Web is available in beta right now, which means it's invitation only, but you can sign up to use it. It's free for existing customers. You can sign up at foreflight.com web. It works very similarly to the iPad app, and everything you do on the web in your web browser syncs to your device. So you can, for instance, plan your flight at home on your, on your laptop or your desktop computer, grab your iPad, and as long as both had an internet connection, you'll know that your flight will stay synced to your iPad so you can go fly. Stratus. Stratus is a dual band ADSB weather and traffic receiver, but it also includes a lot of additional useful functionality. Stratus has an attitude heading and reference system in it, which drives the pitch and bank and synthetic vision. It has a pressure altitude sensor, which will alert you when your cabin altitude starts exceeding dangerous levels. And it also has a WASP GPS for greater GPS accuracy. Stratus connects automatically to your iPad over Wi-Fi. And Stratus is sold by Sporties at sporties.com or Aperio at aperio.com. ForeFlight Connect. ForeFlight Connect is our connection initiative, which we've partnered with a variety of third-party vendors such as Garmin, Dynon Avionics, Aspen, as well as a few flight simulators that allow ForeFlight to communicate with these products. So for Garmin, for you folks who have Garmin Avionics in their airplane, if they have a Garmin Flightstream device, any of the avionics that are supported by the Flightstream will transfer their information. In a future release of ForeFlight, in the not too distant future, we're going to be enabling flight plan interchange. So you can send and receive flight plan information between your iPad and your Garmin avionics. Folks who have the Dynan Skyview system can do this currently in the latest version of ForeFlight. It also works with Aspen avionics. And you can even plug your iPad into your home computer and fly along with Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane, Lockheed Martin's new prepared simulator. It's a great way to stay up to date on ForeFlight and try out new features on the ground. But the best way to learn about ForeFlight, if you haven't already, download the app. It comes with a free 30-day trial, so you can check it out and see if you like it. Again, our fanatical pilot support team is always available at team at to answer any questions you have.